Hi, welcome to the Trauma Thrivers podcast. Delighted to have you with us. I'm Lula Bentz, your host, a psychotherapist, a trauma expert, and a survivor myself. Lovely to have you with us. The Trauma Thrivers podcast is for anybody who has been through any sort of developmental trauma or who has complex PTSD. This podcast aims to help educate, inspire and support those of us that are on a trauma healing journey. We've got stories, steps and various solutions to trauma to help you heal. If you'd like more information or tips or tools or strategies, please go to traumathrivers.com. You can also find this podcast on my YouTube channel, Lula Bent's Trauma Thrivers. If you'd like to join our community of thrivers, please find us on Facebook under Trauma Thrivers. Thank you so much for this month's sponsors who are Silkworth Lodge in Jersey. Silkworth provide residential treatment for people with alcohol or drug addiction. Alongside Silkworms, their support program for children aged 7 to 12 affected by the addiction of a family member. They've also got a new 13 to 18 year old adolescent service. Silkworth provide real end to end support to all of those affected by substance misuse. So for more details, please go to silkworthlodge.co.uk. I really hope you're gonna get lots out of this episode. Hi Trauma Thrivers, welcome back to the podcast and the videocast. I'm really delighted today to introduce Dr. Carol Darsa. Dr. Darsa is a licensed psychologist and founder of the Reconnect Integrative Trauma Treatment Center and author of The Trauma Map. Reconnect is in California in the States and Dr. Darsa has about 22 years of clinical experience in trauma and mental health. She began her career as a foster care social worker and continued her work with abused children and families and then adults abused as children. She is qualified in so many things, I don't even want to give you the whole list here, but basically, brain spotting, EMDR, somatic experiencing, sensory motor. And she has developed her own model called Rhythm, which she teaches to other therapists in the Turkey and the USA. So for those of you on a trauma healing journey, Dr. Carol Darsa is a must listen. And also her book, The Trauma Map, is a brilliant read. So I'm really delighted to have her here on the Trauma Thrivers podcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lou, for inviting me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you. Oh, gosh, I've been a therapist for 22 years, but I got into the field 22 years ago as a social worker because I wanted to work with children who were traumatized. So I did that for about a year. And then I decided now I want to work. Actually, now that I understood what happens to children who are traumatized, I wanted to help adults who've been traumatized as children, and then uh, continued my career since then. Okay. And and looking at your kind of bio and CV, it looks like you've trained in an awful lot of modalities, you know, uh, trauma-based things, you know, like sensory motor and somatic experiencing and EMDR. And brain spotting. And brain spotting as well. So do you combine all of those, Carol? How, how do you use them? I do, I do combine them. I think actually they're much more effective when it's combined. I just created my own model where I'm teaching a combination of all of them because they are very much more effective when you take the best for each client. Yes. Uh, so I have a big toolbox. Wow. Wow. Okay. Because that's really interesting for me because I don't know whether you've seen, but hopefully next week or the week after I've put together a book called the solutions to trauma. And it's just all of these different modalities and actually sensory motors in there, somatic experiencing, 
brain spottings in there, EMDRs in there. So there's about 50 different modalities so that people can look through and see which one suits them. But I'd love to hear more about your including them all together because I think that's brilliant. Sure, I called it rhythm model. Oh, wow. R-I-T-T-M, not rhythm. Okay. Reconnect Integrative Trauma Treatment Model. Wow. I'm teaching currently right now. Are you? And are you teaching therapists? Yes, these are, you have to be a therapist in order to, to know these models, yeah. Okay, okay. And then people listening to this that are lay people, can they, if they're interested in a therapist that can use all of these modalities... Can they find somebody that's trained in the RITTM model, the rhythm model? Right now they are in the US and some of them are in Turkey. So those are the two countries. That okay, so we got to get you over to the UK then. I would love to, yes, absolutely. Then I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, and, and I know that you're a great believer as I am in trauma in a kind of bottom up and top down approach. So I guess that's what this model is about. Yes, for sure. That's the reason why I really like the combination, because when you just do only one of them, sometimes it it may not be as effective. But to me, any modality that you do, you use, you have to use the body as a resource, as a healing, because trauma creates a disconnect from your body. And so in order to heal, you have to find a way to be able to come back and really make peace with your body. And that makes it much more containing and helpful rather than just talk about it and hoping that I'll feel better, you know. Yeah. We, we now know it doesn't work that way. No, sadly, talk therapy just isn't enough, is it, for trauma yeah. treatment? So is that what led you to write the book, The Trauma Map? Tell us a little bit about how that came about. Sure. Actually, The Trauma Map, I really wanted to write for lay people. I did not want to write a book uh, for therapists. That's going to be my second book, by the way. I'm working okay, on for it. doing it for therapists. Yeah, great yeah. idea. Yeah. What happened is I find myself repeating the same thing client after client, and I've been wanting to give them things like pieces of paper to take home so they have something tangible that, that sort of repeats what I said during the session so they don't forget it. Sure. When you have tangible tools in your hand, it's much more helpful. Um, and uh, I found myself saying the same thing. And I said, I wish I could just write those down and just give it to them, you know? Yeah. So it was really to support my clients. Okay. And then I said, okay, well, how about people who can't maybe go to therapy, who can't afford it, or who don't even know what trauma is? Yes. Uh, because I was getting a lot of clients really thinking that unless they had huge uh, either a sexual abuse or a war that they think they Didn't don't have, have trauma. trauma. Yeah. So I wanted to really educate people. So I decided to write a book to really uh, help people. So this, the book could be, this is how the book looks. Oh, like. wonderful. The book could be basically uh, a support while you're in therapy. So you can just sort of go along with it or just uh, before therapy, maybe for the person to get a foundational skills and knowledge about what trauma is and what to do okay wonderful and and in it you've got five steps that you take people through are they consecutive steps or do you kind of do a bit of one and a bit of the other how does it work it's actually both both. okay the first step has to be the first step okay the other one you have a bit more fluidity the first step is about understanding what trauma is yeah sure you don't know what it means and what it does to you or what it did to you then you might really struggle with a lot of self-blame or judgments or and that's sort of why I got inspired too most of my clients were coming in saying well I'm such a strong person how come I'm not able to overcome this was you know 20 years ago this was 30 years ago yeah has nothing to do with strength Yes. And self-blame that I was seeing in clients is what really gave me the passion of, no, I need to help you. You need to understand it does something to your body. It does something to your brain. It does something to your psyche. Please don't blame yourself. Understand. And so I do a lot of you know education that way. And so that's my first step. You Lovely. have to understand what it is. Yeah. Because without knowledge and without psychoeducation, we've got to get a bit of the prefrontal cortex on board first, haven't we? Or the thinking brain. Yes. Yeah. And start to change some of those messages. And okay. also 
this is the first step because it's not as emotional at first. You don't want to open someone's emotions right away or else they'll feel much worse. Yes. So I, I my steps are gentle. That's what I believe. That's my style. I go gentle. It yes. has to be a gentle work when you work with trauma. Yeah, I hear so you. You have to understand first, right? It's a cognitive thing. Then actually comes the second step, which is also cognitive because then I talk about how you might have disconnected from your mind, from your thought, from your thinking brain, where your thoughts get clouded or you can't focus, you can't concentrate. And so I start with things that are less emotional yes. in the beginning to, yes. build, to build some strength. Yes, amazing. And then what do you do next? The, my third step is reconnecting to your body. That's okay. when I start including the body. Uh, in fact, in the mind, I also talk about mindfulness and the importance of bringing your attention to here and now. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that again, because that's, that's the most important part of it is like really, because the trauma hijacks you, right? You are constantly yes. in the past yes. or you're constantly worrying about the future. So when you can bring your attention to more here and now, then we have a chance to really work on it. Yes. So once I do that, the person's attention is more in the present. Then I start including the body. Let's okay. see what happens in your body, right? So and there are good exercises and some tools in the in the book about what to do. Amazing. For, to to connect to your body, and to make peace with your body, and to understand how it shows up, how the trauma yes. shows up yes. in your body. And Carol, can I ask a question between steps one, two, and three? I know this is a massive question, but where are you thinking that a lot of trauma survivors are in terms of length of time between one, two, and then actually being able to get into step three and even be with the body, even stay with the body? What's yeah. your experience like of that? It really depends on the severity of the trauma and the length of the trauma that they have experienced. If they experience trauma, as a young person and it was chronic trauma, uh, especially if it was on physical nature where physically they were hurt, yes. they are going to be having much harder time to feel their bodies. Yeah. Uh, if it's a more recent trauma as an adult and you have some good foundation maybe as a child, then your healing will be much faster. But it's okay. very important not to judge the timing as good or bad. Yeah. It's very important to respect that there's a reason why a person may not want to feel their body, may not want to be present in the moment, because it could be too overwhelming. Sure. So that's the reason why I said I have a very gentle approach. And in the book, I talk about that, where yeah. you don't want to just jump into, okay, feel your body. Like, no. Let's do something positive, maybe even thinking of a place that you like to be, even just yes. thinking of something positive can you tolerate yes. to feel your body being on the beach or being on a nature walk if you can't even tolerate that then you have to go even slower yeah so it's very I, important to know the, the, the pace for each person okay and on obviously at your centers in california or your center is it reconnect Yes, Reconnect Trauma Treatment Center. Yeah, so at your treatment centers, I'm sure that you also have people that are coming in that are self-medicating or using drugs or alcohol or other coping strategies, you know, self-harm or eating disorders. Where, where are those in your step one and two? Do they have to be put down first before the reconnection process? You know, yes. how, how do you work with those as well? Yes, you nailed it, actually. So because I talk about trauma as creating a disconnect, and then our goal is to, to find a way to reconnect with yourself, right? That's the reason why, in fact, my center is called Reconnect Trauma. Yeah, Treatment. love it. Uh, if you are actively using, we do ask for the person to first uh, get sober. Yeah. Because if you are trying to work on, on your healing, but then at night you're using, you're disconnecting back from yourself again, you, you just yeah. can't stay connected with yourself. Yeah. Uh, so a person might not be ready. You know, they have to be sober first. So uh, they have to be free, at least functioning in terms of eating disorder, right? Um, yeah. Some thoughts might be there. Some self-judgments might be there. Those are normal, but we're not, we can't work with someone who's actively constantly, you know. And do disorder. you work with other uh, addiction treatment centers around you to do that piece of work before they come to you if necessary? 
Absolutely. We do an assessment in the beginning. And then if we think it's too active, then we send them out to different treatment centers. And then once they do maybe a 30 day, then they come back and then we yeah. say, listen, underneath those behaviors, we are aware that it's trauma. Yeah. Addiction causes trauma. So yeah. we're going to work on it, but let's get the surface out and then you can come back. If they have a secondary, sorry, I mean, like, for instance, they're, they're sober, but they're about to relapse or they have some eating disorder behavior, but they can function. We are able to work with those people. And then we just give support, particularly yeah. for those behaviors. And I, I suppose I wanted to just pick up briefly on the uh, addiction causes trauma. And, and we know that, uh, you know, in our acting out, you know, it's traumatizing. But how are you with you know, trauma causes addiction. Where are you with that way round? That, you know, if we have developmental or childhood trauma, then the likelihood of using addictive coping strategies is far higher in those with trauma than those without. Without a doubt. I, I, I think, I don't know that I have seen anyone that doesn't have trauma who's who has a lot of addictive behavior. Yeah. Eventually, by the way, addiction can cause a trauma too. Yeah, I agree. But ultimately, there's a reason why a person wants to numb their feeling because that's the bottom line of, of using substance or food or, or even relationship, yeah. right? In form of addiction is you don't want to face yourself. You don't want to feel something. So again, I, that's the reason why when I have a list of traumas in my book on understand trauma, the first step, I talk about different kinds of trauma. Yeah. Uh, relational trauma, for instance, is one that a lot of people don't realize is very traumatic. Yeah. So they say, well, I was never hit. I was never hurt. I, I never experienced war. I, I don't think I have trauma. Well, let's talk about your relationship with your parents, how you were raised and what messages you got, whether you really felt heard and understood and validated. Yeah. And so those can be traumatic. I agree. And, and you know, particularly, you know, clients of mine who who may have been felt like they'd been heard kind of superficially to a level, but never really felt heard emotionally and connected with, right. you know, so the parents were very good at, um, you know, being practical and pulling it together and being to do people, but actually sitting and hearing kids emotionally and being there for their feelings, we know is really important, right? It is. So then a person who didn't get that from their parent might in a way get that from a drug because yeah. there's a sense of like at attachment, right? That they didn't yes. maybe get yeah. from their parents or they do drugs with someone else. And in that way, they feel heard and understood or validated. Yeah. And so it's replacing something that they didn't have uh, as a child. Yeah. And so that's where, again, the trauma is. Yeah, sure. I, I'm with you completely. And I, I agree and concur. So step three, getting them into the body. Are there ways or, or methods or anything that you could say to any of the viewers or listeners today of different things that they could do their own step three process? What sort of exercises do you use in the book? I teach a couple of simple grounding exercises lovely just to begin with um i also teach uh, emotional freedom technique tapping yes yeah. yes that helps for people to start if they have a difficult time in in different way that that could help yoga is another very good way to to make peace with the body and to start really embodying yourself okay um, and you use that at the center don't you do you use trauma-informed yoga or do you use normal yoga we, we now use trauma-informed yoga because some postures in yoga could be triggering for some trauma survivors. So the, the yoga people are, uh, yoga teachers are especially trained. Yeah. In what to do. And I've also seen that you've got TRE. Um, there were other things that I saw that I thought, oh, wow, I haven't heard of that at all. One was the Chris technique. Oh, yeah, but uh, that, that's what I am trained in with, with uh, Christine Shank, my teacher in... Okay, in okay. Um, that's, th I use that more for really for my benefit because it taught me for years of really being grounded. And as a therapist, if I'm very grounded, then uh, I can help other people to, to feel more grounded as well. So, yeah, lovely. And it's... how do you get them, Carol, to start to notice sensations in the body and name 
feelings or even be with feelings to start with and that kind of intensity if say somebody's been disconnected or dissociated for many years i start by asking something positive where we call resources like okay. i ask clients to make a list of resources which means list of things that make them feel good uh like right I'm now you have your dog well, I do have him, but I'm not sure Alfie is quite a resource at the moment because okay. I don't know whether you know about um, fireworks and Guy Fawkes Day. No, I don't know. In the UK, we have Guy Fawkes who blew up the Houses of Parliament many years ago. So it's fireworks. And November the 5th is normally fireworks night where they everybody lets off big bangs and fireworks, but they've carried it on this year in the UK. So he's getting a bit distressed because he can hear fireworks going off in the background. So oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So it's, you are his resource right now. I'm his, I'm, I'm usually, to be fair, Alfie's <laughs> resource, but you know, we won't go into his trauma history. I'm sure right. people won't want to know it, but yeah. <laughs> right. But in that case, if that was a person, right, the person makes a list of resources, could be people, could be even positive memories, places, something even as simple as Disneyland for some people, <laughs> you yes. know? Uh, so we make a list of everything that helps a person feel good and relaxed and calmer in terms of their nervous system valve. And then I ask them to think of that first. Right. And then ask, okay, when you think, let's say Disneyland, when you think of Disneyland, what happens? Oh, I get a smile or I feel like my shoulders relax. Okay. If you can start feeling your body right then and there, that's a good entry point. So you're looking yes. for a positive way to enter the body. The body. Okay. And once they can stay with the positive, they're more likely to be able to, you know, I'm, I, I'm mindful again, that I, we don't like to say positive, negative, you know, yeah. good, bad, you know, know. All feelings are, uh, are welcome, aren't they? Whatever the sensational feeling is. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Of course. But, but yes, we are talking about maybe something that calms your nervous system down versus something that activates your nervous yes. system. Down. Yes. I think we can, we yeah. can uh, yeah. do it that way. Yes. But I like to expand on that for a long time. Okay. Right? Really feeling that, that feeling in the body, the relaxation. And then when, if you're feeling in the shoulder, can you expand to the rest of your body Lovely. and then just really giving pleasant activities for the body to start feeling relaxed. Some, so many people have been tense and, and, and constricted all their lives. So even positive feelings at first could be scary. A relaxation yeah. could yeah. be scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then I have the, the chapter on reconnecting uh, to your uh, feelings, actually, to your emotions. You? A whole yeah. chapter. Yeah, it deserves yeah. at least a chapter, doesn't it? Because that's, that's a big step of it. Yeah. It but that's the reason why I, I start a little bit with the body. So you yes. there's some more containment. And even with the emotions, uh, my main message is there's no right or wrong emotion. There's no bad or good emotion that we have to be able to tolerate. But yeah. most people were not raised this way. So we explore that. What kind of messages did you get? Were you told crying is bad or yes. I don't know if you cry about I'll If you cry, I'll give you something to really cry about, you know. Yeah, of, yeah, absolutely. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that also has to be a gentle entry. That I keep saying that, but it has to be a gentle entry to the emotion, so that you can gradually tolerate more yeah. and more. More and more. Yeah. Okay. So then they move on to. Is it step four after that? This is step four. Reconnecting okay. to your heart. I okay. Call it. Lovely. Lovely. And do you talk about the heart more and the heart's energy versus you know that kind of gut energy? or you know that down here whereas here it feels much more centered and resourceful doesn't it the heart in a way yeah i don't actually talk about it in terms of energy but i talk a little bit about the heart math okay you know, the heart yes. Math yes so I, I i have some information about that there too because it has good exercises and very very simple things to do to just really breathing in and out of your heart or to focus uh, a resource field in your heart and kind of start making connection that way. And then gradually, then we talk about, okay, how you can now talk about more painful memories and emotions yeah. without overwhelming your system. Yes. And that's what they do in step four as well. Yes. Okay. And writing. 
by the way, I'm a big journal writer. I've been oh, journaling yeah. since I'm 13 years old. And oh, happy. I, I regularly journal almost daily. Wow, still. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and you find that really helpful. To me, it's the most therapeutic uh, tool that I have ever used. Whenever, if, especially when you write regularly, yes. inside flow, feelings flow, it's just there's no censorship. I'm not looking to see what this sound like. I don't even care if, if I can read it again. But yes. in that moment, the flow of it is, is, is much more different than if you're just talking about something. Yeah. You may not access the feeling when you just talk, but when you write, right. there is a sense of like really turning inside and, and it, you become more intuitive as yeah, you write yeah. more, more in touch with yourself. Do you teach that in the book a little bit about journaling? I, yes. And I give a couple of uh, ideas of how to, how to journal. Yeah. And did you follow anybody to learn about journaling? Is there anybody that you like in that kind of sphere that does it? Uh, a little bit. You know, the book, The Artist Within? Yeah. Julia Cameron. Yes. That's I right. love her. I love she her. She talks about the morning pages. Yes. Three pages. That's one of my favorite ones. Okay. Yes. I love her. In fact, I've seen her speak in the UK and she is hysterical. Oh, okay. Yeah, I she's really like great. Her. Yeah, I really like her too. Okay. I, maybe I can add that as a resource to the interview for people so that Perfect. they can look a bit more at her work. That's really helpful, Carol. Thank you. I also do dialogue writings in my journal. Okay. You have two opposing feelings and you're trying to make a decision about something. So then I dialogue it. Okay. Almost like a screenplay, you know, like. Yes. Between the, part the different that, parts. One part is this. And yeah. So really having a, a, a better insight that way. I do, I do do that. Okay. A lot as well. Yeah. That's beautiful. And then is it step five? It is step five. So the first four step is really more you're connecting with yourself. You're reconnecting with yourself. And then the fifth one, I look at the disconnect that happened between you and the outside world. Yeah. So that could be people, family members, loved ones, uh, and nature, universe, God, spirituality. So everything that's from the outside that's important that a person may have uh, felt disconnected. Okay. And how do you work with that? Just briefly. I mean, I know that's a massive question. I know. I mean, my book, I'm try I try to keep it simple, short, yeah. easy to read. Like yeah. I, I, I think every little chapter I can expand into a whole different. Yes. Book. But I really encourage people to reach out as much as possible. I do believe we are social beings. Yeah. We are meant to have relationships and relationships when, especially when they are right, yes. can be very healing. There are, there are really, there's research about people who have support on an ongoing basis, how they are more in the thriving place yeah. rather than uh, barely surviving, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's important to reach out. If you, if you don't have family members, maybe they were the abusers. Sometimes that can happen. Can you create your own family? Can you go yeah. to group support, uh, support groups? Uh, sometimes if you have definitely an addiction, then AA, NA, yeah. Yeah. smart recovery, all of that. Uh, if not, maybe a group therapy led by yes. a group therapist. Yeah, yeah. It's about learning to trust really again, isn't it? You know, and trust in that connection and realize that there are some good people out there that really have got you back and that care. Yes, it's so important, even if you have one person in your life. I mean, I have a best friend, for instance, since we are 13. The moment something happens, I have to call her. Oh, and wow. To her. And just yeah. for her to listen to me really decreases my stress. Yeah, yeah. A lot. Yeah. So that, that relationship is, is, is vital. Is, yeah. To piggyback on that, then there is the, uh, the connection to maybe God, higher power, spirituality, depending on what your belief system is. Uh, sometimes people feel maybe let down or loss, a loss of hope or a loss of yes. faith. Yes. So restoring that faith is also very powerful. Yeah. In, in trauma healing yeah and how are you if people don't believe in a higher power or force or god or you know any other kind of uh out there entity what what do you do with people that are more 
atheist or agnostic or don't believe even in I mean Sty always mentioned Star Wars and the force because you know most people <laughs> get Star Wars there's there's got to be some force that holds all the galaxies together and you know uh, I, I just respect it and I yeah. just go with what what's yeah. there I might try to see if there's a connection to to nature yes very powerful a lot of people yes. do that uh, yes. In the last couple of years, I found much more love towards trees, for instance. Yeah. Like just gorgeous. being around trees and just really um, connecting with them has been uh, very helpful for me as well. Yeah. So yeah. finding something yeah. uh, that way. So it's yeah. not necessarily that they're creator, but trees yeah. have a healing power is what I believe. Yeah. And I always remember in the fellowship as well, you know, lots of people used to joke about, you know, if you don't believe in in God, God is your dog backwards. So your dog could be your higher power. So I know we're bringing Alfie back into it. But yeah, <laughs> sometimes I do think he's a bit my higher power as well. So yeah, lovely. It sounds really great, the book. Um, and what are your hopes for it now that more people with trauma get to read it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I think, again, it has good tools. So to practice the tools to, you know, to just if I can give something to to a person who's reading that book, that's uh, that's what makes me happy. In the beginning, I was hesitant to write a book. I'm not a writer. Yeah. And not to mention English is my second language. <laughs> yes. So, what's your first language? Turkish. Is it? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I noticed, too, that you speak five different languages or four and six. you can yeah six, six. Yeah. oh my yeah. goodness oh <laughs> gosh yeah that's amazing and is that because you've lived all over the world or uh, yes and uh i studied languages i was in a french school so i'm fluent in french i also grew up partly in spain so i'm fluent in spanish uh, and I've been here for 28 years in, in the US and, uh, and then I studied and I lived in Brazil for six months. I learned Portuguese. Gosh, uh, so it just uh, amazing. And, then it took... <laughs> and you, were you in the UK for a while too? Yes, actually, uh, UK was my first country when, when I left Turkey and I, I went there to learn English. <laughs> okay, amazing. Where were you? Brighton. Oh, were you? Oh, yeah. lovely. Yeah, nice by the sea. I love Brighton. I yeah, just really yeah. just had the best time there. And, yeah. Although and you're I, in California now, which I'm a bit jealous of. <laughs> I for sure, especially the weather. <laughs> yeah, God, if only, if only. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so, yeah, so my goal is for people uh, just to read and practice the exercises to reduce the blame. That's my most passionate goal. Don't, don't judge yourself and make peace with yourself. That's really yeah. what I, I always talk about. And then um, with, the, with the book, I decided to also do YouTube videos. Yeah. Brilliant. So every, every Sunday I have a little, like a 10 minute, 15 minute video on YouTube talking about something about trauma. Uh, and I have case examples. Like I just want people to listen and, and hopefully get something okay. out of it. And, uh, and I'm just starting a little series in the YouTube. I'm calling it Real People, Real Issues. Right. So I'm going to be interviewing people. I have my first one there. I, I have a few more coming soon. Great. So they talk about real issues and how they, and what they did. And, and some of them, I give some suggestions. Some of them, they already know what to do, but so that people can really listen and relate to it. All right, lovely. I'll put the link up in here to, to the YouTube you. so that people can see that too. And the Reconnect centers, the healing centers, are they outpatient? Are they day patient? What sort of referrals do you take in? Uh, it's Yes, we are an outpatient center. Okay. Intensive trauma, we, right. which is called day treatment or IOP, intensive outpatient. So a person can come in anywhere from three to five hours every day. Brilliant. And do different modalities, including, yes. by the way, there's also acupuncture, neurofeedback, massage, in addition to what we've talked about. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looks absolutely amazing. And I saw that you've got comprehensive resource model as well. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, which is one of the things that I've written about in the uh, Solutions to Trauma series. So, yes. Okay. All the all the top things. I wish you were down the road from me, 
uh, there'd be a few people I'd be sending to your door. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. But but for now and for today, and I just want to say a huge thank you. I really, I, I think that what we've covered is great and the steps really make sense. And anybody that's listening, I really hope that we, you know, you've been able to enlighten them, just taking them through that process, Carol. Thank you. I, I hope so. And again, just the most important thing is not to blame yourself, if I can say one thing to, to the listener, and, and also staying mindful and present. Yes. So really just uh, being in the here and now is a healing uh, of the past. Yes, very true. Thank you so much for your time and hope to reconnect with you again very soon. Yes, as well. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. You too. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to today's podcast. I hope it helped you in some way and I really hope to see you back here soon. If you have anything to share on today's experience or podcast, please nip over to the YouTube channel or the Facebook group Trauma Thrivers and let us know there.